Hello and welcome back to everyone that's tuned in to the American Ultra Stock channel. Thank you so much for being here. Today we're bringing another segment of what has become part of our routine now, the transfer news. We're rounding up all of the rumors that may or may not be too believable, but nonetheless have our players' names on the headlines. Have some big news this week, some A-teamers as well. Before that, just want to address and congratulate Caleb Wiley on having his transfer made official. He's going to be in the Olympics and going to stay in France, perhaps, so he needs to get acclimated there because he will be going to Strasbourg. We covered that on a previous video. So... Talking about transfers that get done, and if it is any foreshadowing that we talk about them in videos, first one we have to say, Braden, there was an article in the MLS website uh, written by a journalist suggesting that a Giorena move to Atlanta United wouldn't be too bad, and Atlanta should pursue that. Uh, your thoughts on it at this moment? We know the guy kind of struggled for game time lately, but how would you see this one? Do you think that by any chance it would be a good thing? Well, first off, like you said about Wiley, uh, I won't go too much into it just because we did f cover that extensively in our last transfer update video. So go watch that if you haven't. But uh, I think it's a good move for him. The Chelsea thing gets me a little bit nervous, especially with such a long contract. Seven years is a very, very long time, especially for a young player who, I mean, it's, it's his first European contract. But going out to London and Strasbourg is going to be good for him. Uh, I think he'll have some decent success there in Liga if the league even happens because their tv deal uh, still hasn't happened yet but for Gio Reyna, i th i think I, I can't really blame atlanta if i don't even think they're going for him i think this was just an mls thing to try to get some headlines which is a bit ridiculous to be honest i mean i don't know why you're creating your own false rumors that have no reality in them but, I mean, if I were Atlanta, I would go for Giorena. They just sold Tiago Almada, their star number 10, and Giorena would be a good replacement. But that would be, I think, pretty disastrous for his career. I mean, he's still such a young player. I think a lot of people forget that he could have been at the Olympics this summer. He's, he's age eligible, still, I think, 21, 22 years old. And I think just because he's been in the professional game for so long, we kind of overshadow that a little bit and realize that we need to realize that his career is still fully out in front of him he has his entire career left and going back to mls at this age it just makes no sense really i mean there's so many european teams that could use him especially in the top five leagues it is a little bit concerning i will say that there haven't been any concrete rumors yet i mean even other players who haven't made transfers i mean you'll hear us talk about a bunch of them later on in this video have had at least some rumors even Zendejas had a rumor that he would go to Europe and we'll, we'll speak on that a little bit later in the video as well but all sorts of players in the A team in the the B team from our youth teams they're all getting linked and Gio has had nothing yet despite the fact that he's one of the players who needs a transfer the most I think him and Matt Turner who coincidentally has also had nothing which is concerning for both of them but I have faith that the right move will pop up I know his agent's going to be very active trying to get this one right because let's face it he didn't get the first one right and he's going to want to keep his job at least uh, so hopefully a good move pops up for Gio hopefully it's a permanent deal I think he just needs to get out of Dortmund at this point I, I think his career there is probably over, despite the fact they sold Terzic. I just sold Terzic, got rid of Terzic, but I think it's time for him to move on, explore a new league. I'd love to see him in Serie A. I think there's several mid-table teams that could use him there, but that's just my personal preference. We'll see what happens with him, but the Atlanta thing, ridiculous. Yeah, completely ridiculous. I mean, it makes sense for Atlanta, but for anyone else involved in that, it's not going to happen. I mean... Uh... That they're going to get Nuno Mendes is going to get him a club that's for sure I mean that's what agents do he's a big agent you touched on the Olympic eligible thing I really wonder if we even try to pursue him to play in the Olympics because he's a guy that kind of has everything up for grabs really in the summer so it would have been nice to have him around but moving on to a player that will definitely not be in the Olympics and needs a move as well you mentioned Turner him unfortunately even though he came back uh, off the back of one of his best seasons with Juve Weston McKinney didn't have a good summer for us as we know the clubs that are in interested in him are a little bit concerned the good thing is the Cincy rumor has kind of cooled down so I don't think we're going to see Wes in the MLS which is good but it seems like the Fenerbahce deal uh, is picking up some steam uh, do you think that there are any odds that Weston ends up being coached by Jose Mourinho which would be very funny to watch do you think that would be a success for him by any chance 
So this one, like the Wiley one, we also spoke about pretty extensively in the last video. I mean, the Weston McKenney transfer saga seems to be a, a weekly update and now uh, in these transfer videos. But I'm going to speak more to the newer rumors that came out in the last couple of days or so. Uh, apparently, like you said, Cincy, their interest has cooled, which is good. But fellow MLS club Inter Miami now have interest in him, which is very interesting to say the least. I think on paper, it, I mean, it makes sense for them. It's a big money, big name USMNT star for them to bring in alongside Messi, Suarez, Busquets. I mean, we, we know they're marketing FC at this point. It, it makes sense for them, for their brand to bring him in. I'm sure McKenney would love to live in Miami. I mean, who wouldn't? Let's face it. But I think for his career, again, a move to MLS doesn't make sense. Inter Miami, maybe you're the one club where it's like, okay, you can understand it because you're playing with the go and all that. But for your career, it doesn't really make sense. It's better for you if you're a young player like Kramaski. You get the advantage of learning from all these experienced veterans. Weston McKinney's 25. He shouldn't need a veteran leader to learn from anymore. He's a, a fully fledged professional by now and should be able to make his own decisions by himself. And hopefully he does so because there is a, a small silver lining that Everton are also interested in him. Finally, uh, another Premier League move servicing. I do have some major doubts with him in the Prem, but considering all the other options seem to be MLS or Turkey, I, I think you just have to cut your losses and go to the Prem. We know that there's realistically not much of a future with him at Juve. They've brought in two new midfielders already this window and are probably going to bring in a third, if not even more. It's clear they don't want McKennie. The fans don't want McKennie. The board doesn't want to give him the money he deserves uh, based on the season he had last year. And I think it's better for him to know his worth and go to a top five league, which it seems like Everton are really the only option now. So hopefully that does end up happening or another club comes in because I still don't love Everton as a potential destination. It's just looking concerning for McKenny right now. And I think we've said this in every single video so far, but all we can really do is just hope that it all works out for the best. Absolutely. Hey, I'm happy that a Premier League club came around. And I will say this, if Wes rejected that Aston Villa deal because of the, the wages that he was offered and it came down to money and he, that's why he was even suited to talk with Cincy. And this time around, Everton offers something similar. He should just learn that sometimes the market talks and that's what you're worth. And that's OK. It's still an upgrade on his contract that he had at Juve. Now moving on to another guy in the midfield that perhaps could be gaining more minutes as we go forward now that Greg's gone and seem to kind of hold off on his involvement with the national team is Johnny Cardozo. Not the best of summers for us. Didn't really get a fair chance in my opinion as well, but he's been linked to Fiorentina. I'll be honest, I don't know why Johnny's being linked to these teams because I think that just staying at Betis makes a lot more sense. But Fiorentina will sign a midfielder. They're a bit of a mess right now, but their sporting director has a lot of money on his hands. And they said that they will definitely be revamping that midfield. Do you think that Johnny could be a guy to add to that? Personally, I'd rather see Giorena go there, to be completely honest. I think it, it does make some sense that Johnny's getting linked to all these clubs. I mean, we saw even higher profile clubs like Barcelona and PSG early on in the window. I believe we talked about that in our first transfer of data this summer. It, it just makes sense from a perspective that it seems to be a bargain deal. He's only played six months or so in Europe and has stood out immediately in La Liga adjusting seamlessly with Betis. I also think it makes sense to stay for another season, but if you can get him for 20, 25, even 30 mil now, it's going to be a lot less than it will be next summer after he's had a season and a half, especially a, a full preseason with Betis and a, a full season to implement himself into the squad. He's going to get even more minutes, probably going to be a locked in starter week in, week out for them and going to be one of their best players, one of their most crucial players. And if they have a su successful season, I could see that price skyrocketing up to 50 million, even maybe even higher. Who knows? I mean, the market these days, there's crazy inflation on player transfer fees. So I understand why there's a lot of interest from these clubs. It makes sense. I, I think Fiorentina, there is a fit there for him. But like I said, I think it just makes the most sense for him and his career to not get too ambitious. And who's to say Fiorentina are even an upgrade on Real Betis? I mean, in terms of club stature, I, I think I'd actually take Betis. And it just makes sense for him to stay there. Just chill, be patient for a little bit. Cement yourself fully as one of the best CDMs in La Liga and then move up next summer.
completely understand. I don't know why Betis would even entertain the thought of selling him because I know that they're in some financial turmoil, still uh, some issues with their sponsors, new sponsors. Will they get any additional revenue? But just keep the guy. Look at it long term. You have a good asset on your hands. Have Let him have another season. He's still really young and resell him. I completely agree with you. And I, I, I agree. I don't think the Fiorentina is an upgrade at all. But now staying in Italy for the time being, another one of the weekly sagas right here we have tenor testman some reports saying that he's really close to enter this time only this time allegedly he's really close but uh as we know they want to see him uh, a loan option for him to get some minutes he's still really young and now they're moving away from italy it seems like ipswich uh, brentford are interested to take him on that year loan but then at the same time some clubs like everton and Feyenoord coming in trying to ditch as a last minute transfer deal and he still hasn't said yes it seems like it could be up for grabs and every day it changes so based on the options he has in his hands do you think that he should go to everton Feyenoord, go to inter on loan to ipswich or brentford which option do you think is best Braden? I mean, like you said, the the Tanner Testament saga also is, is a weekly update here along with the McKenny one. And truthfully, writing the notes for this is a nightmare because it seems like every day a new club is linked. We had Crystal Palace, Fulham, Brentford linked a little earlier on on loan. And then, like you said, Feyenoord and Everton making a, a last-ditch effort to actually sign him on a permanent deal, which is very interesting. Feyenoord, probably because they did just sell their star CDM, probably the best in the Eredivisie, Mats Viefer to Brighton so there's a, a huge need there and they're one of the biggest clubs in the Netherlands and then of course Everton we know they need a midfielder they were linked to McKenney like we just mentioned linked to Tessman I think it makes sense for them uh, a lower level Premier League club similar, similar to the level or maybe a bit below the, the teams that I just mentioned that had interest to bring him in on loan a, a team around that caliber I think makes a lot of sense I, I think he's a very physical player as well he's built well tall and muscular so his game does translate to the Premier League, the physicality that they have there. I think he's one of the few American players, actually, that would play, transition well to the Premier League. So I wouldn't be opposed to that. It's interesting now that all of the loan deals that Inter are trying to pursue seem to be abroad because it, it seemed like earlier in the saga it was going to be go to Venezia, maybe go to Torino. There was 20 Serie A clubs that were interested in him either on a loan or a permanent, but now it looks like he could be going to the Prem. Like you said, Ipswich could be a contender, assuming he does sign for Inter. Ultimately, I'm just going to sit back and see what happens. I don't really have a preference. I think if you look at all of the options, I think they would all work out well. As long as Tessman keeps playing at the level that he has been with Venezia, and especially if he has a good Olympics, I'm sure the interest will just keep going up and... Who knows, maybe it'll get done before the Olympics. I expect it's probably going to have to wait until after. His focus is probably going to be trying to get a medal with the USA, leading them as one of the captains alongside Walker Zimmerman. But I'm just hoping he ends up going to one of these clubs. I assume it'll probably be Inter and, and then a loan to the Prem would be my guess right now. But really, who's to say? Like you said, it seems to change every day. Yeah, it really does. And I will just say, even though I think that it was clear that his preference was Bologna, at least uh, as per the newspapers, but uh, I will say if he goes to the Prem, even to an Ipswich, I think in a developmental sense, I think he's earned a move to a top five league. As we've seen, I mean, it's clear he got promoted as well. But just having that experience, even for a relegation battling team, I think it would be the best for his development. Because the one thing I will say that he needs is to get a little bit better at anticipating things to make up for his speech. So even though he might face a relegation battle, I think that for a player for player it would be best for his development to go there and now talking about players uh developing and where they could go we're going to skip right here to zendejas because he had an opportunity to perhaps go to europe which was nice it was a breath of fresh air the guy was stuck in liga mechis but it seems like he has signed an extension Braden, do you think this is a johnny type of extension where they just re-signed to have a more a bigger sell-on clause or a higher transfer fee or do you think that it will just be something that zendejas is destined for liga mechis now i think this is a ccv type of extension which is the worst type of extension because it means you're not going to challenge yourself and you're going to stay put where you are it is also, I guess, somewhat notable that Zedas did have interest from Cruz Azul within Liga MX. I mean, I think I mentioned this in the last video. 
Liga MX seem to have a transfer carousel with their top clubs. They just sell them all for inflated prices, and that's why a lot of their players don't go to Europe because the clubs ask for too much, and then the European teams are put off because they can find better players for cheaper in so many other places. Like you said, there was interest from Fiorentina. I'm getting a little bit tired of Fiorentina because they seem to have interest in all of our players, and none of them seem to amount to anything. I don't think this Johnny one will. The Zendejas one didn't. Uh, I think there was one other one, Tanner Tessman, I think that's what it was, it did not materialize to anything. Just stay away. Either make a serious bid or stop getting linked, because I'm tired of talking about Fiore and Zina in every single video. But it's looking like Sandejas will stay with Club America. He signed the extension there. He, he seems to be in very good form at the club. I mean, they just won the B Campion, winning both uh, sections of Liga MX. There isn't really much of a reason for him to leave. He's comfortable there. If he wants to challenge for the US MNT player pool for 2026, he does have to go to Europe realistically, but it looks like he's just going to stay in Mexico, which is a shame because I think he did deserve another chance just due to his form, like I said, but it is what it is. I mean, he's not the highest end of players. He's not going to develop into a world-class player or anything. He's already in his prime, so it is what it is, really. Yeah, I just think it's sad, really, because I think that there was a player there, and th if there was a moment, this was his last chance to go there. But maybe he's just destined to be a Liga Mekis player. Now, we have Luca De La Torre, which, with some reports right here, that may be very underwhelming for some people. I'm not too high on Luca. Love the guy. He's from San Diego. But San Diego FC, looking for a marquee signing. He's an American USMNT player. You can put that label on him. And Fiorentina again. No, I'm just kidding. Fiorentina's not involved in this one. It's Sporting Kansas City. Do you think that it's time for Luca to come back to MLS. Oh, he never played here, but to come back home, play in the US. Do you think it even makes sense? Some people may be down on this one, but I'm a little bit puzzled. Is he any is there anything else that he can extract from playing in Europe, Braden? The only thing I'm really puzzled about actually is the fact that Celta Vigo actively put him on the transfer list. Now I'm not too sure about their financial situation, admittedly. Maybe they have some difficulties, but it seemed like they put a lot of their best players on the chopping block and for a team that I think could very easily go down if they lose some of their key players, it just doesn't really make sense. It shows a lack of ambition. Maybe that's not a club you want to be at. Maybe you want to, maybe you see that as a warning sign and take the exit while you can. I still think he's a good enough player for a top five league in Europe. Although, admittedly, I just I can't see him ever progressing past the level that he's currently at. I think he's just kind of a meh center midfielder solid gets the job done but realistically isn't going to contribute anything that's going to change the fortune of a team i wouldn't be necessarily opposed to him going back to mls i wouldn't prefer it obviously i think staying at sosa vigo or going to a, a different team in europe maybe trying a, a new adventure he's been in the eredivisie he came up through uh, english academy and now he's gone to la liga maybe try la syria or, or something like that maybe the bundesliga but I think it makes more sense for his career-wise to go there, but if San Diego FC, like you said, the new expansion team, they have been very, very ambitious so far, signing Hirving Lozano, uh, as well as having a, a lot of uh, emphasis on their academy and trying to make it the their facilities the best in MLS and some of the best in the world. I think I, I've really liked the ambition that this club has shown. It's very untraditional uncharacteristic for ML for an MLS club. So if they're offering the big the big bucks for Luca, I wouldn't blame him for taking it because he's not gonna get anywhere close to that kind of money from Europe. Sporting Kansas City, meh, it's sporting Kansas City. Uh, I'd much rather see him go home, be a hometown hero at San Diego FC. I, I wouldn't hate the move to MLS uh, as a summary, but I don't really think it matters either way. I think to be completely honest, we need to move past Luca De La Torre in terms of the USMNT sphere. If he moves back to MLS, it's great for him. He gets to come home. If he doesn't, good. He can keep challenging it out in the top five leagues. Maybe deserve a call-up, but at the end of the day, we already talked about Tanner Tessman. I think that's a, a player among others that could surpass him very quickly. Yeah, I'm going to be very harsh for here on, on saying this. I completely get if Luca is going to stay in Europe, but... For USMNT fans, I think it's best if he comes to MLS. If we have uh, this type of player playing in Gold Cups, the guy has experience abroad, and again, raising a, a club really, becoming probably the, the 
biggest uh, name apart from Lozano. So I think he would suffice that need of a USMNT player at San Diego. So I think it's best for him. I don't think, like you said, he's going to progress above the level or have the chance, the opportunity to change a game with his skill set. So might as well come back home. But completely understandable if he st stays around there. Now, he was developed in the top five league. And the last player we're going to talk about, he was developed in the top five league as well. We had some really high hopes for him. He was at the Atletico de Madrid Academy a long time ago. And for quite a while, actually practiced with the first team, allegedly once or twice, then moved to Valencia. That was the first warning sign, perhaps. And then now Rodrigo Neri, Rodrigo Neri has moved to Atlanta United. Props to Atlanta. They're trying to build something there. I can see all of the intent, but they have signed a, a player right here that I had some hope, high hopes that at some point. What do you think about this move, Braden? Uh, a player making the the switch on a different direction instead of going to Europe, coming back home. Are you a big fan of this one? What do you think Neri has in store in the future? I think it's sad, and it's not to say that his career is over or anything. I mean, he's still such a young player. He has his entire career ahead of him. But I think a couple of poor transfer decisions have taken him completely out of the U20 consideration. He was in one of the camps leading up to the tournament this summer that we will be covering, by the way, so stay tuned for that. But he didn't make the final roster, was preferred to two other strikers. Truthfully, there's like three other strikers that were even left off the list that I would have preferred to Neri at this point. It just, it didn't make sense at the time for him to leave Atleti to go to Valencia's academy. My reasoning, uh, my, or my rationale when he did make the move was that, okay, maybe he thinks there's a bigger path to the first team at Valencia. I mean, we all know how big of a club Atletico de Madrid is, and it, it makes sense feasibly with the personnel that both clubs have that maybe he would have a better chance of the first team at Valencia, but he really struggled there, it seems, in his lone year at the club, and he's just taking the, the safe route, I would say. Coming back home to, to the USA, signing for Atlanta United's second team in MLS Next Pro. Now, I will say that Atlanta have sold like their entire roster recently, so there is a path to the first team if he performs in Next Pro, but that's no guarantee necessarily it's not the greatest of leagues but it's been developing over the past couple of years we truthfully don't know what Neri's level is aside of a couple u20 games that we've been able to catch glimpses of it's very hard to track down footage from games and foreign academies so the time will tell i guess for him but i think it's very discouraging for his career that he's gone from someone who was one of the lone standouts in terms of bright prospects that we had at the Pan Am Games, which was technically a U23 squad last fall, though, I mean, let's be real, it was like a C team for the U23s. But he was one of the standouts there, I thought, and now his career just seems to be spiraling downhill. Not to say he can't get it together. Uh, I think he still has a lot of potential, still a promising young talent at the striker position, but it's just not what you want to see from one of the supposedly top prospects that we had. Absolutely. And on that note, I would like to ask you guys that are watching, if you're watched this far, are you a fan of these types of reports on the younger players? We see a lot of movement going on with our youth players, even players getting signed to uh, or just getting promoted to the first team. So let us know if you're a fan of this. At times, it does get a little bit repetitive reporting some of these, like the Tesman saga. I mean, every week is just a bunch of new clubs. So let us know in the comments below. Well, do you like the updates weekly or do you want things that are more concrete? Do you like uh, if we uh, cover a little bit more of the youth process? that seems to be one thing that you guys enjoy about the channel and leave in the comments below your thoughts on the rumor mill of this week any of these moves that you guys think will actually happen will come into fruition let us know share with your friends make, make sure that you give a like and if you haven't subscribed yet please make sure to do so as we have a lot of content coming up and we'll see you next time